That's I don't know. Yeah, this is um, the TCW podcast. I'm joined today by Bailey Pleasant. Um, thanks for joining us, Bailey. Thanks, Mike. Uh, thanks yeah. for having me. How was your time? Have you been at me in quite a long time now? Um, obviously, the highlights probably the cup runners next Tottenham and all of that. But um, how have you felt? How's your time? You felt it's been like? Uh, I've enjoyed it. Um, I think it, you can see that I've enjoyed it very well. That's why I've uh, signed for the upcoming season because I've just um, enjoyed playing my footy at Marine. Yeah, and it. I was out because obviously we haven't spoken to you before. How how was that cup run? And it was a long. Quite a long time ago now, but you know, I was because obviously there was no fans, was there? So, how was the cup run through the players and yourself? I think it was like what a distraction from what was happening in the world at the time of COVID. Because obviously, we wanted football was just like to take your mind off what was happening, and then our solution for that was the FA Cup run. Uh, I think no one would have known what at the start of the season that we would have been playing the third round of the FA Cup. But when uh, the season was stop, start, stop, start, F- the FA Cup was the only thing that was going for us and the FA Trophy. So we ideally prioritised the Cup games because we knew they, they would go forward and then the league was like a 50-50. And then yeah, obviously yes. when, when you get to, to the first round, it was like, why can't we go to the second round? And then when we got to the second round, it was like, why can't we go to the third round? And then obviously we got there and we got Tottenham. Yeah, well, obviously when you, you obviously, because I remember we watched them all at home, basically, but um, when you got having some more to leave, was that, did you all think this is a real chance to get to the third round? Because obviously when you get to the second round, it's a bit, you want a home tie really, don't you? Because obviously it's tough away, isn't it? If you go to the league team, was, was when you got having, did you really think you could get to the third round? Yeah, we had, we had that belief because it was, our, it was our home. I think if, if it was away, I think we wasn't being as confident as we was, uh, yeah. just because we knew how we could play. Our, our style of football is um, is like how we play at Marine. It's different to maybe what we would play on a bigger pitch. We know that Marine is isn't that quite wide. So at the time we would just bought, like look play it forward to Niall and that Mo and Kenji would then um, play off uh, Niall and then Baz and Josh at the time would get the second balls and Jody would just be behind them in yeah. the pivot. And what was it? I mean, obviously, again, we haven't spoken to you. What was it like playing against Tottenham? I mean, obviously, you're used to playing players in non-league, and obviously, you played in like Colchester and that. But I mean, what? And it's probably an easy, easy answer, really. But the difference was, could you just see the difference, really, seeing that type of Premier League player? And obviously, you, you what level were that? Yeah, no, the, the the level of difference it was it was scary. But to be fair, the first twenty odd minutes. We coped very well. We had probably yeah. the best chance that in a, maybe in a professional football game, you'd call it a half chance with Kenzie shot from 35, 40 yards out. But then, obviously, you just see the quality of differences in yeah. the players. Terry Alley just started saying off after 20 minutes. And then yeah. within, like, 15 minutes, it was 4-0. Yeah. I know, I actually remember the first 20 minutes because I was watching it. I was thinking, wow, what the hell's happening? <laughs> they haven't really done anything in there. And then within five minutes, so as you say, five, ten minutes, Steve. I'll, yeah, I'll go on to this season. Then. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, the last few months probably haven't gone as well as we hoped. I know you've probably seen it. There has been a bit of criticism, hasn't it? But from the players' perspective, what have you thought of this season? Has there been like a bit of frustration? You haven't, you haven't been able to win the league or, you know, what might have been? Or is it just now just, you know, focus on the playoffs now? It's a bit of both. Um, like, obviously, after the, 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 the lead up the first three months with the, our form, you'd expect us to win the league. Yeah. But then, obviously, what's happened, like, we, we've we lost three of our main back four from last season. We lost Joyce in October. We lost Miley third game into the season. Then we lost Ravo um, mid-December. So there's all the three of defenders gone. Then yeah. we... Josh was Josh was injured for a month and a half, two months to start the season. Danny Shaw and Dino came in and both done a job for us, but then Dino got injured and then Danny got injured. So we didn't really have a, a set back four yeah. till maybe Kyle came in and then when we got Luke from Bamber Bridge. Do you think do you think you know, you know, going into that, do you, do you think like I know obviously when you lose a game football, you know, fans will say things and stuff like that. 
do you think they don't really realise, like, obviously we've seen it with Liverpool, didn't we? Remember when, obviously, Van Dijk and, obviously, Matip was injured, they didn't have hardly any defenders, and Liverpool were never the same team. Do you think fans don't kind of realise how much it's affected the attacking team as well? I think because defensively we've done all right, but obviously when you're having to play, like, Kenny left-back, and, you know, they're playing, you know, Wignall was playing a bit deeper, do you think they don't realise, like, how it's affected the whole team kind of thing? It's, yeah, it's it, you have your it's and buts, but like when they've played left back and right back for us, they've done a job. Yeah, of course. It's yeah. just the, it's just really the disruption of the defense and the, like the, the style of play. Because Mark Mark's an unbelievable like player with the ball at his feet, and you yeah. can see when he's playing centre back, he wants to get on the ball and he wants to yeah. drive into the field and he wants to make those passes. But when you've got Kenji. He's, who has to do a job for us and play left wing back because we had no we had no defenders, yeah. and when he's when you lose his pace up front, it kind of takes away our style of play where we would hit opposition playing in behind. And like you said with Liverpool, we were all critical of Liverpool not bringing in defenders and all that. Yeah, and look what happened to them. They got feared in the end. And I think like what you said at the start with the question, I think if someone would have gave the gaffer that scenario where he would lose three of his defenders and then he would lose multiple defenders as well. I think he would have just he would have snapped the hand off it in yeah. the circumstances and we got playoffs. I also think like um, obviously my point of view, like I also think people don't realize how much juice was a big miss because I don't obviously White come in, but he's obviously been in the bit, hasn't he? And he didn't come into like February was I think it was February anyway. But I think with Joyce he was always fit, wasn't he? He was always getting up and down the pitch. I think we've had kind of lacked that because we've always had to like put Barrigan maybe a left back on me and then Kangi a left back, which again just ruins the team a bit, doesn't it? Midfield and off your front. No, yeah. Oh, Josie, Josie was a hell of a player. Um, when when I was the the start, like start of last season, like I I didn't understand why he was playing at the level that he was because week in week out he would always give you an eight out of ten. Yeah, and then even. Even the start of this season when he was playing, it was the same old Josie. It was eight yeah. out of tens. And obviously, when you lose a player like that, who's your your main left back, it is going to be hard because you you don't want to lose James Barrigan in midfield because he's one of your main midfielders. Yeah. But he's he also does it. He'll also do anything for the team. So when the Gafford asks him to play left back, Jake Bazzi will play left back because he, he wants the best for the team. Like no. I think with, with with all the players really, any position that they get pulled in by the gaffer, we all want we all want the best for the team and we all do what's um, what's right for the team as well. Yeah, yeah. Um I just wanted because obviously we, we talked a bit, didn't you obviously when you went off the team and that um obviously you've had you know a bit of a dip form um but I want to touch on really the metal side because we spoke about that didn't we on the, on like five matches as yeah. I mean for me I it wasn't and, and I think everyone said this, you know, all the fans were behind you. Um, you always thought, it's, it felt like it was a bit of a mental thing that you, obviously, because you'd made a couple of mistakes, then, you know, it was hard, it seemed hard for you to get out your head a bit. And then, but we talked, spoke about it, just touch on, like, how you coped with being out of the team for a month and what you did, like, mental, you know, so obviously, when you came back in the team, then that wouldn't affect you as much, you know, if you did make a mistake again. Uh, so, I've known Morgs. And Morgs can back, back, like, if anyone asks Morgs about this, I think my real side of my game is my mentality, where I make a mistake. I think when I make a mistake in the past, uh, what's it called, me had to go, like, I still worry about that ga- game. So, like, say, Leek, we played Leek on the Saturday when I made the mistake against Leek, and then we played one corn Tuesday night, and I punched the ball, and I missed, punched, I missed punch the ball. Then we played Newcastle Town, and then I let the ball go through my hands and hit the bar. I just didn't feel as confident going into the games, but I knew that it was because I was playing every game. I can't really show that. But when when I got took out, obviously, it was hard for me because I, I wanted to play every game because what I've done leading up for, for the three months, uh, I wanted to keep on playing. But I had to raise the gaffer, and the gaffer sat me down and told me what was happening, and he gave me his word that I would have to share back. Um, eventually, after a month, um, he said that he, he wants me in the best possible frame of mind and he wants me to be back to the Bailey that he knew that I was a year and a half before this day. Yeah. And to be fair, to be fair to the gaffer, it, it, 
it worked out because I came back. I kept four clean sheets and four. I can see that in the first six games, two goals. Um, so when I was off the team, it was it was just really just training hard, still working on myself. Like even when I make mistakes in training, not be as critical. And then obviously when I made the the mistake against Leek on the weekend, uh, I was it was more like a test of character. Where do I go harder now, or do I still like do I still be this Bailey that I have been for the past nine games, where mm-hmm. I'm coming out ca- catching everything. No, you've been brilliant. You've been brilliant, Sam. So, so, so I want to touch on the because obviously the game. I, I mean, yeah, I don't mind on the pitch afterwards, and I was actually, I mean, I knew the pitch was bad, but I was kind of shocked how bad it was when I stood on it. It was like, I just couldn't believe how bad it was. It, is it being really? Di- I know people will look at this and think it's an excuse, but what is it being really bad to play on that pitch because it's not in the greatest condition, is it? <sighs> We don't really want to use the pitch as an excuse because end of the day, both teams got to play on it. Yeah. And so we can't really use that to a factor, but it does, it does kind of stop us hard to play, right? Because uh, don't get me wrong, like I, I go on Twitter and I see some of the like the, the comments and all that, and I understand the frustration from fans yeah. because I we are like us players, we're fans of like Liverpool and all that. So yeah. when your team isn't playing well. Obviously, you're going to have that negative comments and that, which is understandable. And when you've got a pitch like that we have, it's hard to play football on it. Yeah. So that's why it constantly does seem that we're always going long, long, long. Yeah. Because in the midfield, even we've got the place to play football, we've got the place to play one, two, like one, twos around the corner and all that. But when yeah. a pitch, when a ball's bobbling constantly up at your shin, you, you don't. Without meaning it, you're taking that extra touch, then yeah. that extra touch gets you closed down. Yeah, so of course, yeah. it's just obviously, one of them. Really. Obviously, since um, like Ravens left, because he obviously he was a bit of a leader. I know Cummins is his captain. Is there is there like obviously because the, the, the form we've been? Is there like any real like just an out and out leaders, or is it just a collective thing with you all? You all just have it out basically, kind of thing. I think. I think. Um, Everyone's really as a voice in the in the team, especially recently over um, these past the running into the playoffs and like the over the last couple the two last games, everyone's voiced their opinions in the chat. It's not and like maybe the ones that you don't expect it from, but they've voiced their opinions. I think because everyone knows what we want. Everyone wants to get out of this league, yeah. and everyone will give a hundred percent. And obviously l- losing Rave always an experience. Like head in the in the game, obviously you're gonna lose that voice, but yeah. then it gives opportunity to other players, which you did to be a voice in the change room. Yeah. Um. So we we go to work on tonight. Um. You know, obviously we in the three games. I think there's been what we beat them twice. I mean, they beat us once. Um. There's been one goal in it, and the other one was a draw. So there's only ever one goal in it, isn't it? Um. I, I couldn't believe they never won the title on Saturday. To be honest, the market Jason. Do you feel like? You know, that could be an advantage. I mean, do you feel confident you can beat them? Because you obviously we have beat them. So what's the feeling between you and the players about going into this game? Well, to be honest with the we're all confident. Obviously, I think people outside the marine will probably vote us off because of what the second half of the season has um like shown. Um but we we because we've beat them before, we believe that we can beat them again. And obviously their heads will be down because of the, what just happened on Saturday. Yeah. But that will also give them great motivation to go out tonight and pull on a performance because they feel like they should be the, the champions of this league. Yeah. I was going to say, obviously, going back into the when you were out the team, a lot of fans were right, right behind you. You've probably seen it, didn't you? You got messages, people said there. What did that mean to you personally? Because obviously it's not always the cases in non-league where like, you know, a player's like kind of loved, but you are kind of like a cult hero movie and everyone's like loves you basically, don't they? So what what did that support mean for you personally? Like obviously when you're going through a tough period. No, I am um, I appreciated it. Like I, like going on Twitter and all that. Um obviously after the, the game against Mosley where it happened, I felt um, a bit sly on Aiden because obviously it was Aiden's first game and like 
you see in comments like, oh, why is this lad in goal? What why is Bailey not playing? Which is unfortunate because he's been thrown into it like again. Yeah. But like what you're saying about the support and all that, like it, when I was going through it, going out to the team and all that, I was like I was like fucking hell. I have been, I have been crap like this, and I have been that. But then when it's like I've got fan, like all oh, you use the fans and all that, constantly saying like you'd be back in no time, you'd be in great falls and all. It's just a tip of form. It was more like it was like more to like me, like it was it made me ability wise. It was just my confidence that was lacking, and then seeing all the messages and all that, it was slowly building my confidence back up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was gonna say. What do you think? Obviously, today we're going to be just don't know that we're going to be outnumbered. I mean, we'll probably get maybe eighty there today. But what does it mean to have the fact, like, because obviously they're going to, it's a three hour coach there, so a few people are going to have a few drinks and that. What does it mean to have at least some fans there? Because I think something we've like said is that it would feel like advances worsen a little bit if you if we have no fans there. So what what would it mean to have? You know, what's the fans' influence tonight? You know, what would what you want to you know get on the fans tonight, basically? I just don't want to hear the fans shut up. Like, that's it, really. Like, be loud. Be louder than the workers. And like you said, we're going to be outnumbered, aren't we? We're yeah. basically going to their back garden to play maybe in front of 2,000 people. And we're what, bringing 80 to 100 Marine fans. Yeah. So, obviously, their voice is going to be, like, the loudest. But if we don't shut up for the 90 minutes, like the fans, it will certainly give us players... Uh, like motivation to not let down uh, what we've been trying to achieve all season and it would give us that extra 10% when we might be feeling a bit like exhausted like tired like oh, we're giving everything but when you you're there, list, yeah, when you're when you're the fans constantly cheering and shouting like nonsense let's just say like fucking come on Marine like that yeah. it would give us that extra 10% to so like go and get that winner or go and get that equaliser yeah, I, I think people don't sometimes like don't obviously it is non league, but I think they don't realise how like a big support, you know, like just like getting behind the team, stuff like that, you know. It's like I think that's been a criticism we have home, isn't it? A lot of people some people have like said the home support in, in certain games isn't as good as like when like for say, say for instance Bootle or the Wrexham, but as you said, I think it really does like, you know, as I said the game is like this where it could be tight, it's gonna you're gonna need that lift and a part of the game when they're on top kind of thing, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? Um, do you think your experience, obviously, the contest, your experience in, you know, you, you've you been you've been in these games, you know, against Colchester, you know, these game, big games, do you think that experience, because there's a good group of players that are still a bit here, you know, from that good cut run, do you think that will help to, in this playoff? Because obviously, it is a one-off game, isn't it? It's pretty much like being in the FA Cup, isn't it? But obviously, it's the playoffs. Yeah, um, I think it will help to a degree um, because obviously I, I think I'll be set up for the games in the FA Cup was, it was against like professional outfits and all that. Yeah. We know how work to play and we know how, how much a, a big game this is. I mean, and the, like you said, we've got a few, we've still got a, quite a few players that were in the Tottenham game and the Colchester games and all that. So obviously we know how to experience a big game. Um, and then we've got lads like Lewis Riley who came in from Chorley and they, he got to the fifth round. So we know well, well, well um, as I know these certain circumstances. So we're, we're going into it level-headed, confidence. And to be honest, we're going in as underdogs because everyone's bolts us off already. And do, you feel, do, you feel, do, you, do you feel that though? Do you, do you feel, do you really feel people like, I've like, even like, you know, I know like people do, it's obviously, fans have, but you think like even some some of the own fans are being a bit like that, where they just feel you know, do you feel like you're being ripped off really going into these playoffs? That, like, you know, in the space of a few months when we were top of the league, now everyone's just going, Oh, we can't do nothing. Basically, do you feel a bit ripped off and you want to prove people wrong, kind of thing? Yeah, no, the, the lads want to prove everyone wrong, especially what happened recently with those three points that got deducted. Uh, everyone wants. All the lads in the changing rooms want to prove everyone wrong. wrong. Um, not just Wilkinson, League, or the Linux who were in the playoffs. Everyone in this league 
we want to prove that we are the Marine that you played at the first half of the season. This second half of the season is just a complete different Marine. But we're showing the character and the fight to be able to get in the playoffs. And we're going to show tonight that the Marine first half of the season is basically the and tonight is what should have been all season because of injuries and that it didn't allow us. But we know that going into tonight, we are underdogs. Workington are the favourites. We're going to Workington's back garden. So it, we, we've been here before. Marines been here before in a one-off game as underdogs. Yeah. So we're going. To, we are confident going into it. I want to. I also want to put put on what you said about Aiden, didn't you? It's just my point here. I was just say when we spoke, didn't you? You 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 were you were totally behind Aiden, which I think really like shows your class as a person, really, because obviously you must have been faced with straight to be out the team. But the fact that you you was given full support, I thought that was really brilliant. Yeah. Um, just last thing, really, just um, if you just got like a, a message for the fans, basically in the playoffs, like you know, just a little bit of a message. Yeah, um, look, obviously the season hasn't went how we wanted it to go out of winning the league, but we're still in the playoffs. We've got a massive game tonight, and we've got a massive chance to prove everyone wrong. And we've got to, so the first hurdle is working in a way, and then the next hurdle is either Leith away or Linnet away. So we've got to, we've just got to be behind each other, players and fans, coaching staff, everyone's just got to be behind each other and then um, give the best, best possible outcome, which is obviously going through to the final and then getting out of this league. Well, Bailey, thank you very much. I really appreciate the time because I, I imagine, you know, you're short on time today. So, um, yeah, no. I need to get a haircut. <laughs> get ready for later. But yeah, thanks for your time and thank you very much. No, sorry, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you.